There are a ton of Wi-Fi 6 mesh systems out there and finding the budget friendly is really hard but I think it's about to change. Welcome back to Deal Unboxing guys and today we are going to review Azor's Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. This is the first Wi-Fi 6 mesh system in the market with a price tag under $130. But the real question is, is it worth it? So in this review we will do a Wi-Fi speed, coverage and performance test and see if this budget friendly Wi-Fi 6 mesh system is the right choice for you. So please sit back, relax and enjoy the review. Also please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Let's do some quick unboxing. The mesh system comes with quick start guides, warranty card, Wi-Fi 6 mesh units, power adapters and Ethernet cables. Now let's look at the specs. The Wi-Fi 6 mesh system is powered by Tri-Core 1.5 GHz processor, 256 MB flash, 256 MB RAM, it supports AX1500 dual band Wi-Fi 6 802.11 AX standard, UFDMA, mu mimo DFS bands, band steering and also supports easy mesh. In the connection options, each mesh unit has 4 1 gig Ethernet ports with auto WAN detection meaning you can plug in your WAN connection to any of the Ethernet ports. There's also a VPS button, power button, and on the front there's a LED status light. Let's talk about design and features. The Azores Wi-Fi 6 has a unique cylindrical design, but overall good construction. The overall body dimensions are small, measuring 6.3 inch tall, 3.5 inch wide, and weighs only 360 grams. The router has a lot of ventilation on top and bottom to keep the hardware temperature under control. The Azores Wi-Fi 6 mesh is configured for maximum performance and coverage up to 5,000 square feet. It is a 2x2 two two dual band Wi-Fi 6 mesh, with total networking speed of about 1500 megabits per second, out of which 300 megabits per second on 2.4 GHz and 1200 megabits per second on 5 GHz band. This mesh system is perfect for many modern homes, even on the larger side of things. So this Wi-Fi system is looking great for families, small offices or apartments. So it is a great system for multi-story houses. The mesh system supports OFDMA and mu mimo technology, lets your router communicate more data to your more devices at the same time. The Wi-Fi traffic is managed much more efficiently since data is transmitted from different devices at the same time, rather than having each device data waits for its turn. This results in an efficient use of airtime, reduced latency and increased bandwidth to more devices to your network, which means you can connect more devices than ever before. It increases Wi-Fi data rates up to 60%. To enjoy lag-free online gaming and even 8K streaming. Now let's do some performance coverage and speed test. So we place the Azores Wi-Fi 6 main router in the basement storage room. It has concrete walls around it and it is in the lowest part of the house. And we place a second mesh unit on the main floor of the house and configure the mesh system. For this setup we are using Intel AX200 Wi-Fi 6 card installed in our laptop and we are also using iPhone 11 which also supports Wi-Fi 6. So the total square footage of the house is 5000 square feet. I will be testing Wi-Fi connection in different corners and floor of the house to see how well Azure's Wi-Fi 6 mesh system performs in terms of speed and coverage. In this test we will also use Fast.com which is powered by Netflix to perform internet speed test. We will also use iPerf3 performance test. So if you're not familiar with iPerf3, it is a tool to measure maximum bandwidth on the wireless or wired networks. So we have our MacBook Pro configured with iPerf3 server. So as you can see on the screen we have both Wi-Fi bands separately configured. 2.4 GHz band is called Batman and 5 GHz band is called Superman. Also we will be using 5 GHz band for best performance results. The 5 GHz band is set to 80 MHz bandwidth. And you have the option to either select your channels or leave it to auto. So let's get started. I have 1 gig Verizon Fios connection. And for the first test I have connected my MacBook Pro to the router via Ethernet cable and we are getting full 1 gig internet speed, confirming router can handle 1 gig internet speed, which is amazing for this price point. Now for the first Wi-Fi speed test, I have placed a laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card installed right next to the router, and as you can see we are connected to 5 GHz Wi-Fi 6 channel with speed up to 1.2 gigabits per second, confirming the 80 MHz channel is working correctly. And using fast.com speed test, I am getting 690 megabits per second download wireless speed. And now we are going to run iPerf3 test on the laptop, and we are going to use 5 streams instead of single stream. With iPerf3 5 streams, we are able to get maximum speed up to 540 megabits per second wireless network bandwidth speed. Now we are going to run fast.com speed test on iPhone 11, which is also placed right next to the router. And using fast.com speed test, I am getting 530 megabits per second download wireless speed. Now we are going to run iPerf3 test on iPhone 11 as well. And we are going to use 5 streams instead of single stream. With iPerf3 5 streams, we are able to get maximum speed up to 784 megabits per second wireless network bandwidth speed, which is also amazing. 
Now for the second test, I'm standing 30 feet away from the Wi-Fi 6 router in the basement with a couple of walls between the Wi-Fi router, iPhone and laptop. I have so far good Wi-Fi connection. First using iPhone 11 with iPerf 3 5 stream test, we able to achieve 342 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Now let's run fast.com in a speed test on iPhone 11 and we able to get 290 megabits per second wireless download speed. Now let's move to the laptop with Wi-Fi 6 card installed. And here we are connected with very good wireless connection speed. And when running fast.com speed test, we are getting 420 megabits per second wireless download speeds. And running iPerf 3 5 stream test on laptop, we are able to achieve 264 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Now let's move from the basement to the main floor of the house and do a third Wi-Fi speed and connection test. Here I still have good Wi-Fi signals and solid connection for both laptop and iPhone. And using iPerf 3 5 stream wireless speed test, we are getting 214 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed on iPhone 11. And using fast.com speed test, we are getting 140 megabits per second download wireless speed. Switching to laptop using fast.com speed test, we are getting 170 megabits per second wireless download speed. And using iPerf 3 speed test, we are still getting an average of 178 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. Now move to the far left side of the house and close to 60 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls between router, iPhone 11 and laptop. First running fast.com speed test on laptop, we are able to achieve 150 megabits per second download wireless speed. And running iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are able to achieve 137 megabits per second bandwidth speed. Now at the same location, we are going to switch to iPhone 11 and using iPerf 3 speed test, we are still getting 180 megabits per second wireless bandwidth speed. And using fast.com speed test, we are getting 130 megabits per second download wireless speed. Now let's move to the far right side of the house and close to 30 feet from the Wi-Fi 6 router with the floor and few walls between router, iPhone 11 and laptop. Here now we have good Wi-Fi signals for both iPhone and laptop and using iPerf 3 5 stream test on iPhone 11, we are getting 164 megabits per second wireless speed and using fast.com speed test, we are able to achieve 130 megabits per second download wireless speed. Now switching to laptop at the same location, Using fast.com speed test, we are getting 150 megabits per second download wireless speed. And using iPerf 3, we are getting 86 megabits per second bandwidth wireless speed. Now let's move to the second floor of the house. Here we have two floors and few walls between Wi-Fi 6 router, iPhone or laptop. Here we have very good Wi-Fi signal strength, with solid Wi-Fi connection on both iPhone 11 and laptop. And using iPerf 3 5 stream on iPhone 11, we are getting 472 megabits per second wireless speed. And using fast.com in a speed test, we are able to achieve 370 megabits per second download wireless speed. Now switching to laptop, we have good strong Wi-Fi signals here. And running fast.com speed test, we are getting 400 megabits per second download wireless speed. And using iPerf 3, we are getting 277 megabits per second bandwidth wireless speed. Now finally, we are going to do a router's network ethernet speed test. In this test, we have both our iPerf 3 server and client laptop connected to the router by ethernet. And using iPerf 3 5 stream test, we are getting close to 1 gig bandwidth speed as expected. Now let's look at the router admin setup. Azores designed the Wi-Fi 6 router setup to be a very easy process. All you have to do is download the Azores router app to your Android or iOS device. Connect your router to your modem. Or if you have Fios with the Ethernet connection, you can connect router's WAN port directly to the Ethernet cable and you don't need modem. Then just follow the instructions in the app to complete the setup. Or you can set up using your web browser. The web setup has a very clean interface with ton of options to choose. So we are going to go over the settings very quickly to see what are the available options. On the main screen, we have mesh information, internet information, wireless network settings with number of connected devices, also has wired network devices. Then continue on the top menu, there's a status menu. Here you will find device information, WAN information, LAN information, Wi-Fi information, LAN host information, mesh information, and mesh topology. And then under device information, you have router's information, serial number, software version, and hardware version. Then under WAN information, you have IPv4 and IPv6 information. Under LAN information, you have all the LAN connected devices information. Then under Wi-Fi information, you have both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz wireless information, their SSID, channel information, encryption, and more. Then moving on, under LAN host information, you will find all the connected devices information what band and access point they are connected to. Then under mesh information, you will find information about the master and slave access points and link rate speed. And then under mesh topology, you will find information about the devices connected to the master access point and slave access point. 
This is very good information for people who want to troubleshoot which device is connected to what access point. Then moving on to the basic menu, here you can check the wireless settings about 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz band. I'm really glad that Mesh System supports WPA3 authentication and encryption. And you can also set bandwidth, transmit power, VLAN mode, guard interval, DFS configuration. These are very good advanced configuration options if you're an advanced user. There's also option for WPS switch. Either you can enable it for 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz band. Then moving on to the advanced settings, you have an option to set password, system upgrade, to check update firmware. You can also restore to factory settings. Also have an option to NTP, DSCP, IPv4, IPv6, blacklist URLs or websites, broader mode settings. Then under add-on, you can set parental control, block internet access for any device on the network. Also, you can set up guest network. You can also change LED indicator timer to turn off during nighttime. You can also set up Wi-Fi network timer to block internet access during certain time of the day. You can set a firewall, UPnP, and there are a ton of other options. Moving on to the traffic tab, here you can monitor the network traffic of wired or wireless devices, which is very good advanced feature, and you don't find this information in most of the budget wireless routers or mesh systems. And finally, under troubleshooting, you can check system logs, do a ping test for troubleshooting, tracer test, port mirror, and remote management. But you don't have to set up all these settings if you're not a power user. You can leave everything to default. Let's do a final summary. Overall, Azure's Wi-Fi 6 mesh system did perform very well in this review for its price point and its AX1500 category. The Wi-Fi 6 router delivers good Wi-Fi coverage, good Wi-Fi speeds, and does not have problem covering 5,000 square feet. The highlight of the mesh system is its price point, which is only $120 at the time of this review which is the best Wi-Fi 6 mesh system price in the market. On that basis, I have no problem recommending Azor's Wi-Fi 6 mesh system for anyone who is in the market for the budget-friendly Wi-Fi 6 mesh system. The mesh system offers great set of advanced features, good Wi-Fi speed, and performance without breaking the bank. Let me know what you guys think of Azor's Wi-Fi 6 mesh system in the comments below. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for notifications for the future videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.